Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I want to do is, this is the first part of a two-part uh, series that we're going to wrap up on Sunday. And it's making your own watch. And this is a beginner's level from a beginner <laughs> who's as a watchmaker. I've taken a couple courses on watchmaking itself, and that's taking a, a movement apart and putting it back together. But uh, the, the process of actually getting a case and getting everything you need to make a watch is, is something else. Um, so I decided, well, I'll divide it into two parts and to try to be very clear about it. Uh, today, what I want to do is that I want to take a look at a movement, take a look at some of the tools we'll, we'll be using, and also how to do a basic adjustment on, on a watch. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need some way of telling whether your watch is running fast or slow or whatever. And there's two basic tools for this that I that I use. One is called the time grapher, and um, it's uh, the one I have. It's sort of big. I have another uh, video I did on it, and you can take a look at that. And the other one is called um, Frederick Constant Time Grapher, and it uh, plugs into my iPhone. I think it'll also plug into an Android. Uh, base system, either one, and you simply clip it on here and it'll tell you whether your watch is fast or slow and so forth. So anyway, to, uh, to get started, what I wanted to do is to sort of give an overview of what we're going to be doing, what tools I think are important to have, and you really don't need too many, but uh, I think it's important to have some. Now, the, the, the movement that I'm going to be using is a 6498 or 6497. I, I, they're the only difference between these two movements. They're both by ETA, by the way. They are originally by Unitas, and they were made for pocket watches. And um, anyhow, the reason for this is that they're nice and big, and if you do any work on a real small one, it can be it can be tricky. And uh, so, that, and also too, by the way too, there's a wonderful video on how to make your own watch. And I'm, uh, that's, this is by an expert. This, what I'm doing is sort of from a beginner's point of view, looking at the mistakes a typical beginner will make. Uh, and believe me, I've, I've made, <laughs> I made some, but uh, other ones I haven't made. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about was the movement. Now, you can buy these movements in different ways. There's uh, two different kinds, really. If you're going to get an ETA 6497, for example, you can also get a Seagull. It's called an ST36. I would recommend the ST36. The reason for it is if you break it, it doesn't cost as much. Uh, I think I got mine for about $30, $40. Somewhere in there you can buy a, an ST36. Uh, and they're a clone of the Unitas dash slash ETA 6497. The difference between a 6497 and a 6498 is that the 6498 has a small second to 6 o'clock, the 97 has them at 9 o'clock. Okay, uh, this particular one happens to be a, a real, a genuine ETA 6498, and so it's going to have the small seconds. Uh, here's the, uh, this is going to be the dial side. They'll be down here. Okay, um, so one of the things that you have uh, when you get your, or you should have when you get your uh, movement is a little plastic case and this is important because you don't want to get your fingerprints and oils from your hand I don't care how clean they are on your on your uh, movement you just you just don't want to do that 
In order to help you uh, work with that, these things are called finger clots, uh, cots, I'm sorry, finger cots. And they go on your fingers like this, and uh, you put them on your opposite hand. Uh, if, if you're right-handed, you put them on your left hand. If you're left-handed, like I am, they go on the right hand. And you use three of them for to work with. And then your dominant hand you use for your tools. In this particular case, what I want to do today is I want to show you how to move the regulator to adjust your speed so if your watch is running too fast or too slow you can make an adjustment uh, with this and so what you do is that you hold uh, this is going to have to come out of the case when I uh, work on it. at least half of it come out of half of the case when I work on it and what I'm going to do is right down here there's, uh, there's, you have a, a device called the regulator. And what the regulator does is that it lengthens or shortens the length of the, of your, your hairspring. Uh, the longer the hairspring, the slower it goes, the shorter it is, the faster it goes. Now these movements uh, run at three hertz, which is considered slower than most, which means that they have a little longer hairspring. Okay, um, so the first thing I do is that I hook it up to my my time what I, the time grapper, and to do that, that's one of the things that these little plastic cases are handy for. This part, the big part down here, you put over the movement, and essentially what happens is that there's a what amounts to a little microphone in here, and it goes down and then into the software. Uh, that that's uh, that's inside the uh, my iPhone okay so I come out with find out how fast or slow it is now the reason I'm talking about this now if you're gonna make a watch you might as well make one as accurate as possible okay so um, what I found is that the watch is running 35 35.9 seconds per day fast. And so every day it's it's uh, gaining 35.9 seconds. And what I want to do is to get that as close to zero as possible. And by moving the regulator to make the spring just a little longer, uh, I'll be able to, uh, to do that. Now, the other thing I want to talk about to getting started, you need some, some basic tools. Some of these you can find around the house. Other ones you probably need to order. If you're using the ET or ST36 by uh, Siegel or either one of the uh, ETA 6497s or 98s, you're going to need these three screwdrivers. Uh, watchmaker screwdrivers are color coded, which is really very handy. And the three that you're going to need for this particular movement, you're going to need the red one, the blue one, and the green one. And for different size screws, and there's only, I think there's only one screw that we're going to be dealing with, but um, it's not a bad idea to have all three of those. The other thing you're going to need um, is a set of tweezers. Now these tweezers are anti-magnetic tweezers and uh, this one is I believe a number five okay so you get a number five uh, set uh, tweezers if you're feeling flush you can get a size two and a and a number five okay the other thing you're gonna need <clears throat> is either a toothpick you're going to need a pegwood stick um, you can either use a pegwood stick or a pretty good size uh, wooden uh, toothpick. The reason that you want a wooden one, or they also have some other ones uh, that you can buy that are uh, anti-magnetic. They're, but are basically what they are. They're, they they replace either a wooden pegwood stick or a toothpick. Toothpicks um, are a little difficult, I would say. You need something with a nice long uh, stem to it to uh, to work with. It's easy to work with this. By the way, the reason. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing a hat with no rim today. Uh, even my beret sticks over here. 
when you're working on a watch, you don't want to have a rim or a lid or any sort that gets in the way of the light. Uh, and believe me, uh, anything, even a beret, they don't have a long lid on it, but, uh, or a baseball cap, you can turn around and wear it uh, backwards. That'll, you can work with that too. So that's why this instead of my, one of my usual hats. Okay, so you need the, the screwdrivers, you need the tweezers, and they've got to be anti-magnetic tweezers. If, you, if they're not, you can run into all kinds of problems that you don't want to have. And that's why we're using wood, because it's anti-magnetic. The other thing you might be able to find in your garage is a good pair of wire cutters. Now, the, on Sunday we'll, we'll see more about this, but what you're going to be cutting down is the stem on your, you have a, uh, this part here is quite long and you have to trim it down so that it's flush against the case. Well, they're different. The reasons they come so long is that they're different size cases and some cases are quite big <laughs> and others are relatively small. They have to fit this and I think about 40, 41 millimeters, about as small as you can get. Uh, the one we're going to look at, I believe, is either 42 or 44 millimeters. We'll be looking at that on Sunday, though. Okay, so that's what you need the wire cutters for, is to cut this thing down. Okay, um, so now what we want to do is that we, we have determined that the speed of the watch is too fast by about 35 seconds. Now, by changing the length of the hairspring, just, just a little, uh, can make a huge difference. And so what we want to do is that we want to move it just a little and, and then test it. And if it's still running fast, then we'll have to do a little more. If we do it too much, it'll be then running slow and we'll have to push it back the other way. So, uh, so that's going to be the next thing we're going to do. Uh, we know what this what the problem is. We know the problem is that it's running 35.9 seconds fast. Okay, and we want to get that down to zero. So let's take a look and see how that's done. Okay, we'll push the See if we can get the thing slowed down just a little and we'll push this this way just as hair and see if that's going to work okay for us. Well I tested it on the time grapher and I slowed it down it was but I slowed it down too much so I'm going to have to readjust this just a little okay now I moved it again to speed it up a little <laughs> I'd gone from too fast to too slow and we'll see if we can get it this time okay well the uh, the changes that I made and that little demonstration <laughs> a little more I thought you started off at plus 35.9 seconds per day and then I moved the regulator a little too far to slow it down and then it became minus 58 and then I moved it back again and now it's plus five uh, an excellent setting is you it's between zero and five uh, zero and seven seconds a day and five seconds falls within that. Now I could play with it some more <laughs> and get it as close to zero, but uh, two things. One, I'd be here for a week, and second of all, I'm, I'm not a master watchmaker, but I just using a simple little pegwood stick uh, or a toothpick or uh, your non-magnetic tweezers, you can just move that little um, arrow or stick uh, one way or the other. 
Uh, one of the things that I wish that that uh, the uh, regulator had on on uh, on this uh, uh, movement was the, a plus or minus indicator on it, because uh, that really helps a lot. I'm going to take a little magic pin and I'm going to put a minus on one side, so I'll know that if I move it, uh, which direction to move it in, if I want to slow it down. Okay, now the the reason I did all of that was that before you make your watch, you might as well adjust it. It's just as easy to adjust the regulator once you have the whole watch together because what you'll be doing, you'll just be taking the back off and, and you'll see the, the, the works for the back where you do the work is off of the back. You don't have to, thank goodness, you don't have to take the dial off. Okay. That's all for today, and then on Sunday, we'll see how to make your own watch. So hope to see you then, and by the way, this is always an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. Till then, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.